Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Winning Ways, where Paul and me are going to go through everything and let you know exactly what's going on. We've got a slightly different format this week. Quite interesting, because um, we're going to have a tribute to the late Jack Ramsey, in uh, which I did an interview with him in 2013. And he's a fascinating man, and um, well will we remember him after we've seen this. But uh, going into the week's weekend sporting events... South Africa won at the rugby, James. Did Wasn't they? that fantastic? I thought that they were very, very lucky to win. Two adjectives. Yeah. Very, very, very lucky. lucky. No, I, uh, I think you're, you're just about right when you're 10 points clear in a big match like Argentina couldn't close them out. But uh, woeful. I don't think we're going anywhere, James. Do you know what? The, 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 if, if you looked at the game um, and tried to analyse it, and I'm a rugby analyst, as yes, you know. Yes, no, of course, yeah. of course, yeah. Um, the one thing that I can tell you is that when they got the proper flanker on, okay? A go props Jaco, or a go Jaco flanks? Creel, the proper flanker, oh, not sorry. the prop, okay? The <laughs> flanker, Jaco yeah. Creel took yeah. over from uh, yes. Lowe, okay? He looked very good. was way past his sell by day. Yeah. The whole game changed because uh, Whiteley yeah. and Creel started working the Lions together. Boys, the, the Lions boys are very good. Ah, oh, different class. The different Lions boys class. are outstanding. Yeah. But James, it was worrying and, and it, it looks like we're not going to get anywhere. And I think we've got a tough I'm, task going away from home. I'm fearful for our cricket and our, our rugby teams. And the All Blacks? I'm fearful of them now. I'm very fearful of the All Blacks. Luckily, it's been raining. Otherwise, I think the All Blacks would be giving us one in Durban to go on with. Yeah. But anyway, um, interesting. I had um, dinner with Simon Dool on Friday night. Very interesting man. A cricketer from New Zealand, as you know, fast bowler. Oh, yes. And um, he's a racing man. He tells me you've got a lot of horses um, well, to come with, uh, with those Sullivans. I'm trying to get him to come to, to the come race. We can do anyway. an interview with him. Anyway. But, James, but then before you move on to the three to follow, what about your beloved Arsenal, firstly? Listen, you know... I've got to have a go at you. I've okay, got to have a go at you. All they I muck. can tell you is that it's, it, they're very good at trotting around the six-yard box, passing the ball to each other. Yeah. That's the best. They never get inside the six-yard box, but around the outside of it, they're pretty good. Uh, Ozil to uh, Santa Cazola, back to yeah. Ozil, back to... Uh, Have you had any phone calls from any of your Liverpool mates? Um, no, but they uh, got drilled, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Burnley. Burnley, yeah. Burnley yeah. beat them 2-0. Yeah. But uh, the big guns are coming through, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, they're, yeah. they're looking and, good. And West Ham. Uh, Who? Jo West Ham. Joey Ramson's going to be in his 83rd element. 83rd minute, and it wasn't a well, shot Joey Ramson's going to be in his element. You know. oh, Joe, He'll be yeah, blowing yeah. bubbles flat out this whole yeah. week. Okay. Really blowing bubbles. <laughs> yeah, well, they've they got some points on the board. Well done to them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I'm worried about the rugby. I think we've got a big problem in Argentina. Um, the, the worst part of the whole, the worst moment of the whole game is poor little Elton Jankies trying to clear his line and the, the hooker, the, hooker <laughs> the captain. Walks, uh, captain walks straight into the kick. You know, no, when, the captain you didn't, uh, James, you must be watching it again. The captain didn't walk in the kick. He turned his head to look to see where he had kicked it. And he caught it right on the pip, knocking three of his tats out. But don't you get down so that the guy gives it, get, can kick it out? Just, it was, was a woeful kick. It was a woeful kick. No, it wasn't that bad a kick. It was a it shocking was, kick. It hit the man five metres hitting you in the head. You, when, you, when you're on the five metre line, you're under pressure. And le, the captain shouldn't be walking into the kick. Let's go. Let's go and have a look at what we've got in three to follow. Dad distorted humor. He's probably one of his best sons at stud. Oh, have another! Wins the derby! I have another in the Lilacs and Lace, 48 to 1. Upset! He's just a big, strong, leggy horse. Right, well this week three to follow because of lack of racing and lack of horses to follow because we looked, we searched through this whole um, the program over the week. There was not one horse to follow that we found over the week. So we thought we would look at last year's racing and pick out three horses from last year's, uh, last season's racing, that's August to August, that we think you should follow over the next um, 12 months. And we're going to kick off at Scottsville with the winner of the Alan Robertson fillies. And my goodness, I think this filly is top class. The secret uh, is out. 
is um, they're drawn for watch this filly win. This is a cracker. Yeah, she, she's a very good filly, James. And at one stage during this race, I thought she wasn't going to win. I thought she was under pressure, but she made it three for three. Read and owned by, by Garth Miller, and Garth got a partner, I think, in the source, you know, Captain Secret. They've had a, f a few, this family's very good, and Vaughan's done a wonderful job with every one of the family. Just here, James, you think, well, she's, she hasn't got too much to do, you know, uh, she's just going to have to find a gap, but it gets tight and she does find. Well, you look closely at the one at the back of the field, Fursa, I think is her name. That's right, the hot second. Yeah. She's worth following as well. Now, you look at these feature races and you can see, but here the secret is out, switched outside the horse of the green sleeves, and um, now starting to be asked to be quickened up by MJ Bailefeld, and she gets on with the job. But Fursa runs a, runs a very, very good race behind her, and I think that she's one to have a very close look at in the future. Yeah, secret yeah. is that? Secret is that she responds to the urge, which shows she's a good filly. And uh, the rest are trying to come at her, but in the end, she's just a tad cosy in the end because she was really running about and it was her first effort at this track. She remains unbeaten, beautifully bred filly, and uh, puts a group one next to her name. Yeah, and I think that uh, she will be a filly that over the season, uh, certainly in Cape Towns and th things like the Scepter Stakes and those sprints. She's going to be very yeah, hard. The to Southern beat. Cross. The Southern Cross stay. does the business. Right, yeah. let's go and have a look at the second one we picked out. And that's the winner of the Golden Horseshoe at uh, Durban, Grable on July Day. We think this uh, Son of Zophany is very, very useful. And watch a race, you'll see why. Yeah, it's a big horse, James. And uh, uh, his first start, he lost four lengths. This day, you'll see again, he just doesn't know what's going on. He runs in Fred Crabby's silks and uh, he walks out of the gate. This is a group two with some very good horses in the race and uh, manages to pass one or two going towards the fence at the back. And I think, James, the Zodiac ruler is when it learns to race, this big horse is going to be very good. Interesting, you'd say, why didn't we pick out um, Gunner, who ended up winning the Group 1 on Gold Cup Day, or Misty Berman, who ran second, I think, in the same race on Gold Cup Day. They both ran um, behind this horse. We don't think this horse ran to his form on Gold Cup Day. Well, that's my opinion. Yeah, no, I think, that, agree with you. I think, I think his danger better. would come from the gold medallion winner. Yeah. He's a very good horse. All right. So uh, he's now stuck towards the back, and uh, you've got a couple of um, Buffalo Soldier and Palladiums uh, towards the back as well. He looks like he could be quite a nice horse. But. Uh, have a very close look at Zodiac Ruler. He goes through, uh, he's in the black and red colours, he gets a split down the middle, and the way he puts his field to bed, Misty Burnham's here on the outside, and um, yeah, Gunner, Gunner Misty Burnham, outside. but he comes walking past him. Yeah, he absolutely makes him look second rate, and I think this horse shows this type of ability. He could be the Guineas horse, certainly be a horse in Cape Town to follow, um, as long as the Snaith boys get it right. Uh, yeah. I think he's top class. Top class, yeah. As I say, the Gold Medallion winner looks a very good horse too. So we've got a nice season ahead of us. But this horse, Zoffin, he's flying, James. Yeah, flying. He's, um, he's a young sire and certainly doing it all over the world. He looks yeah. like he could be the business. Yeah. We then move on and go and have a look at the horse we think is probably the right horse for the big group ones over the season, certainly the 10 furlong group ones. And that is the winner of the Mike and Carol Bass Champions Cup their own horse, Marinaresco. Yeah, James, this looks a very good horse. He showed when he ran in the Vodacom Durban July, when he came from a hopeless position, even though it was a bad draw, it was a hopeless position, and really ate up the ground. He gets a better position this day, and even though, James, you'll see later in the race, he doesn't quite get the split he wants at the right time, and he still wins very comfortably. I'm looking for clashes with Legal Eagle and uh, the French Navy and horses like that to find out how good he is, but he looks like a very good horse, this. Well, he's Five from the back, in the middle of the scrum there with the blue cap and the pink sleeves, and next door to the horse with the red cap and the yellow sleeves, that's um, the Mika's colours. Yeah. And he, as you say, things don't go for him. He's a son of Silvano, which means he's going to go the ground, and he's bred by Maurice Fontaine, and probably he could be one of the better horses Maurice Fontaine have ever bred this horse. I yeah. think he's very, very useful. The way he ran in the July and the way he won this is yeah. outstanding. Yeah, James, he, and he's owned by some very big players in, you know, uh, Marsh, Bryn and Fred, they own the source. They can have a lot of luck and a lot of fun with them, I should say. I was uh, watching this race keenly and I think just before the stretch, 
it gets a bit tight for him, James, and he goes straight past him. He's well, not a big horse, James. Absolutely not a big horse. Here he's never he's never really going. A Bezanova gets up on his inside, puts him into more trouble than he's in. He's uh, you want. You know, he, he just, he's third last at this stage, and he's got the whole field to pass in a good field like this. He's got 57 and a half on his back. It's not like he's, um, you know, bottom weight. And here he looks like he comes out to get the gap, and it closes on him. And he still he looks puts his head down, comes out to the outside. He runs past the ice machine, I think it is, and ice machine's no slouch, yeah. like he's standing still. There's no worries there. There's this horse just absolutely gallops him flat. Yeah. And um, to He's turn it on in the Gravel Strait like that. This is a very good horse, James. Hands very and heels. And he goes back to his hometown where he was shown he's a top horse. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful summer season with this horse. But uh, we believe he's the horse to follow. Well, Walter's always said this yeah. is the one. And uh, I know after he won the second leg of the Triple Crown in Cape Town, they admitted to run him in the third leg because they made him their July horse. Uh, they're a sharp operation, yeah. and when they start talking like that about a horse, be very, very careful of him throughout the year. I think he's got big things ahead of him. We're going to go and have a look at the blast from the past. We've got the 2015 Choice Carriers Championship. Remember, we won this one. Gates are open. Soft falling rain, pulling clear. Soft falling rain, won the SA Nursery by three. Racing, racing in the 2000 guineas. Gates fly and they're racing in the Godolphin Mile. They're off and racing. Weight didn't matter. Class tells soft falling rain, much too good. Soft falling rain, an impressive guineas winner. Soft falling rain is drawing clear. He's made it seven out of seven by winning here today. But it's soft falling rain who is powering away. We'll see out the mile in style. A high class performer wins the day of Joel Stakes. Gates are back and they sent on their way. My emblem just a little slow and destroyed, not that smartly away. Just Felicity, Victoria Lavelle on the far side is pushing forward. She's up looking for the lead and well in flight is also right in touch with them too. And Andre Shah has pushed forward into third. Entasar just in behind that, settling in that fourth placing. Patala is just along her inside. They followed by Princess Royal and she's five lengths off the lead. Icy fires along the inside of that one. Further back then to Taffety Tart. And one rider has been dislodged at the start. I'm not too sure which one it is, but there is a loose horse galloping loose on the track. So they midway round that turn now with 800 metres left to go. Victoria Laval is out on the lead. She has it by a length and a half. Andre Shah is racing back in second. They being followed by Just Felicity up on the outside third and well in flight back at the rail races fourth. Entasar is just in behind those and Princess Royal Corners just the length of that one. Patal is beautifully placed back at the fence. Taffety Tart came very wide into the straight behind runners. Princess Royal is as deep as they switch off that false rail and head for home. Victoria Laval leads him in the Choice Carriers Championship over towards the inside. Entasar towards the outside and Just Felicity racing behind that. Patal is coming on nicely. Icy Fires unwinding a good looking run over towards the inside as they come down to the final 200. Entasar is just in front. Silver Mount running her down up the outside and Silver Mountain is coming away closing. Silver Mountain draws off from Entazar in the closing stages. Taffety Tart might have just snatched third. Well in flight was behind that. Well, we're heading for the Cape season. Uh, the Choice Carriers, um, the Phillies Championship is always a great race. Silver Mountain, we still think she'll pop, pop back this year. She'll yes. be uh, well worth having a look at. Yeah, very good. Another Silvana. Um, yeah. yeah, she's Top draw. She's, she hasn't really got too much more to prove. You know, she won the Phillies Guineas by five. Okay, well, we're going to be back um, after this with Plum of the Week.
front from Explorer C. Down the inside, just a gigolo. On the outside, Warbash and former request. But it's Noah's Ark with 200 to go. It's a length and a half clear. From in second, Warbash down the inside, just a gigolo. Noah's Ark continues to go out here. Down the inside, it's just a gigolo. And Warbash wider out. But it's going to be Noah's Ark wins at Noah's Ark under Gavin Larina. Beats him just a gigolo. Warbash a good third. Former request a long way back to... Well, Gav Larina's back in town. This horse was starting to show signs of coming back to himself. He looked like a blinder in this type of race. There was a real lack of, um, of uh, opposition. Ideal world, Maritz Fontaine bred. Everything was there for you to back this. You could have got 7-2, uh, to 4-1 to one on Interbet. That's where you had to be. Yeah, James, I thought it was the horse to beat. It won very country. And just getting back to Gav Lorena, nice to see him back bouncing on winners. He's, he's done us proud. Yeah, certainly has. And I'm sure it's not going to be long before he gets another overseas offer. But we're going to move on and have a look at uh, current affairs. Yes. If you love soccer and you play the Toad, you won't believe what Interbet has to offer you. All the excitement of Toad betting on your computer or your cell phone. It's simple. Choose your teams and your bets, work out what your combinations will cost, see how big the pool is, and place your bets. You can even track your bet live as it happens and get updates on your progress. It's all the fun of the Toad on your phone. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now at www.interbet.co.za and you could be a winner. the graduate of the week and uh, we go with none other than Legal Eagle, a Bloodstock South Africa graduate of the week. This horse is owned by Marcus and Ingrid Euster, bred by the Aventure Thoroughbred Farm, Legal Eagle. He was a 425,000 Rand buy from the uh, National Yearling Sales and um, he's by Gray's Inn out of a six-time winning um, uh, stakes place winner of six Young Sensation. In fact, I think that Young Sensation came from the Eckerts from High Flyer Farm She's that family, one of those things, fair models, the family. Legal Eagle, Horse of the Year, 2015 and 2016. And um, Equus Myler, last season, uh, he's a fantastic horse. And uh, in first or second, his last five outings, Group 1s, all of them. So Legal Eagle, the BSA Graduate of the Week. And um, with that, we're going to move on and have a look at some of our uh, highlights of the week and Saratoga is always a highlight and uh, yeah. Songbird at Saratoga Saratoga was and, and then you've got Delmo on the west yeah. coast so they've yeah. got two wonderful sets of meetings and they're very good meets as they call them in America but Songbird James is turning out to be a superstar I actually did go and watch the race yeah. and sat second and destroyed them won, won a street and this is a very good horse uh, Songbird by yeah. uh, Medaglia Dora. Funny enough, Jerry, Jerry Holland offered trains her and uh, she ridden by Mike Smith and Mike Smith won the same race in, are you going to give me something? Nothing at all, carry yeah. on. Okay. Mike Smith won the same race in 2000 for the same connection, so okay. uh, the Alabama. So it was quite interesting to see that. She, but the, she won by seven lengths and she's now 10 for 10. 10 for 10, yeah. She is absolutely the, the unstoppable. Yeah. Um, and they all said that the, the last time she ran the coaching club Oaks was a bogey race for her type of filly and she'd get beaten. She murdered them, absolutely yeah. murdered them. She goes a mile and a quarter on her head. Uh, she's very, very good. Just talking about very, very good. Nothing better than California Chrome at the moment. He was yeah. on the other side um, of the coast, down at Del Mar on the west coast, and uh, we've got the TVG Classic. We're going to show it to you from the start. Watch this horse, watch the splits at the top of the screen, and you'll see a horse that can really gallop 10 furlongs at the top. It's post time for the 2016 TVG Pacific Classic. Roar from the Del Mar crowd as they sent on their way in the TVG Pacific Classic. California Chrome bounced out the gate and California Chrome sprinting away to lead them clear early. California Chrome's moved about six horses off the rail and has the lead. Beholder is in second and Dortmund is right there third. Delmore on the outside has fourth opportunities down at the rail, then hard aces. 
imperative in the goal six off them and then back to win the space and war story into the turn they go and no turning back for victor espinosa now he's all alone out on the front on california chrome california chrome nice and relaxed though just tugging away leads it by just over two beholder a very comfortable second and dortmund on the far side opportunity straight paint and delmore's right there in fifth only three lengths covers them all now then win the space hard aces at the rail imperative between them and war story is last they've just run past the 5 h pole and victor espinosa's letting california chrome stride and california chrome strides on now he leads by three big lengths Beholder is tracking from second. Dortmund on the far side having to be asked to keep up a little now. Then opportunity. Dalmore behind that. They've been followed by hard aces at the rail. In behind that comes win the space imperative. And last of all, war story. Now comes the test as they come to the top of the lane. California Chrome. Victor Espinosa took a confident look back. California Chrome is strong on the lead. Beholder is set down now by Gary Stevens. Dortmund on the outside and opportunity. Homeward bound. And California Chrome is threatening to turn this one into a romp. Victor Espinosa hasn't even thought about the sticks. One of the greatest performances you'll ever see. California Chrome in a canter. California Chrome, unbelievable. Beholder certainly not disgraced in second. Behind that came Dortmund, Hopportunity, Dalmore. Then we came back to Imperative War Story and Hard Ace. Well, what a performance, James. This horse has now won its sixth Group 1 California Chrome. The people have been talking about the clash with the, is it Frosted? Because yeah. Frosted's improved uh, as, as uh, an older horse. But uh, the runner-up, James Beholder, has won 10 Group 1s. Yeah. Dortmund's no slouch, you know that. Yeah. This is just a very, very good horse getting better. Well, he won in two minutes flat. Okay, his fractions were 23 and a touch and 47 and a touch, and um, I think 109 for the first uh, for the first six furlongs. You just don't run those type of fractions. Uh, mm. it, it, it's it's scary to watch something like that. He won easing up in two minutes. Let me tell you, run two minutes on the dirt anywhere in the world is some type of performance yeah there's, you know uh, we'd seen american american pharaoh do it yeah. last year did this was this year as i say they're all building up the breeders cup yeah but uh, this is a superb horse and art sherman who looks like Ivan moore yeah he uh, he was there again to yeah. get his get his uh, accolades and uh, do you remember, I remember a couple of years ago we spoke about how the owners of they sticking with art sherman hasn't it paid off i think it's just wonderful i think it's wonderful for art sherman and um, they deserve everything they get. And as, uh, much of the, the hick cowboys, they say they are. Let me tell you, those boys, they put their money down. They, they bought back their, their mare for $2,000. They sent it to a $2,000 stallion. Yeah. They produced the best horse, I think, uh, well, this is one In of the best time. horses you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but talking about best horses, in Australia, you've got Winx as the best filly in Australia. The best, yeah. She's super so Funny enough, uh, Winx's mother had a fold, had, had a filly, th just this week. Yeah. So what's that going to be worth? But Wings came back in a group group two. She's won a slew of group ones. Yeah. And again, too good for them. Absolutely. Then you want to go to probably the best grass horse in the world, I would think, is postponed. Um, he won a big mm. race in Dubai. He got moved from Luca Kamani. He's now with, I think, Richard Foy. And, um, I'm not sure. He's, um, he won the Judmont International on Wednesday at not York. Roger Cholton, no? And, uh, and he, he just... He, he wasn't right. Um, the, the stories were out that this was, was not at his best, and he still won them, uh, beat them with pure yeah, guts he won and them. Courage. He won them quite yeah. well, I thought. Well, yeah. I thought he won yeah. them well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when he came back from, from Dubai, I thought he might need a run. He blew them away. When Epson, he blew them away. He's a superstar, James. Superstar. And um, the, one of the best stars in the world, Idaho, won the great Voltiger. Yeah. You know, in England as yeah. well, and we're talking about while we're talking about York racing, the Lather Stakes, which is for two-year-old fillies, Frankel first and second. Yep, uh, betting we had them the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Appleby's horse was the favourite. Yeah. Charlie Appleby's Fair horse. Fair Eva. Yeah, Fair Eva. So they said it once further, but what a start to a, a stallion's career. Amazing, isn't it? Queen Kindly won the race. Um, yeah. The Lather. So that just shows, um, you know, what that's all about. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the Franco run in this country. Yeah.
Yeah, very Dennis is Philly. Yeah, I, was, I had the pleasure of watching Franco win uh, at Royal Ascot on the same week as, of course, Yates and the Black Caviar. And Franco was just a superb racehorse. One of the best ever. And um, just talking about the best ever, Greg Sheen, back from uh, quite a long injury break, and nice to see him back in the winners. Yeah, nice. Um, very nice guy. Speaks well, he rides well, and uh, he's back winning races. Nice. And then uh, there was a big sale that came by. Well, James. Norris Juglil, just let's get finished with oh, that. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, he that's very good. his 100th winner in Singapore. And Cranji, 100th winner at Cranji for yeah. Patrick Shaw and Fred Crabia, yeah. at Group 3 with Raffaello. Yeah. And uh, Fred and Pat are still really flying. flying which flying. is fantastic. You fantastic. Know, that's well done to longest, both of them. Longest standing relationships ever. But let's go to Bloodstock, South Africa. Had the big two-year-old sale, and it was a phenomenal success. Absolutely amazing how the Bloodstock, South Africa two-year-old sale went. On the first day, Captain Al Philly went for 800,000. Uh, mm. Clip Triff consigned it. Fast yeah. and bought it. They were leading consigners, weren't they? Clip Triff, yeah. They were the leading consigners. They sold... Uh, five million rands worth of horses, which is pretty good. Maritz Fontaine, second on the consigners list with 3.1 million rands worth of horses sold. Uh, but this sale has really, really done well. The, the averages were up 34%, which is uh, apparently right. the highest increase this year in Gee, any, that's very, any very major good. sale. 34%. They turned over 23 million. Yeah. It's and been the, a sale, James, that's given us Champions. Yeah, hundred. Uh, the the top price colt was a Silvano, also from Clip Drift. Form Bloodstock bought it. Uh, they were the top buyers. Two point one million rand they spent on it. And it's Mr. Chung. I'm just talking about him. He was second highest bidder, James. He's always been a supporter. Um, uh, he's had horses with Magna and Dryer. I think those are the two guys that he has horses with. And um, he bought six for two point seven million. Best top price was four fifty or average four fifty. So um, it's nice to see um, the support that we're getting from other parts of the world, mm. um, especially at a sale like this. Uh, this sale, the, the, the difficulty with the sale is it comes after quite a lot of other sales. Yeah. And it's in the dead of winter, so the horses never look their best yeah. at the sale. Um, but but they, it's a source of champions. They sell good horses here, and uh, this year, no exception. I'm sure we'll find something really good will pop out of this slot. What I do like about this sale, James, is there's a million dollar, a million rand race for Colts and a million rand race for Phillies strictly from that sale. So yeah. people had to buy. It's a yeah. good return. Yeah. yeah, it certainly looks like you've got a chance. But um, uh, the stats were amazing and uh, well done to Bloodstock South Africa and the guys who are running it now seem to have their finger on the pulse. They've really uh, turned it around very quickly. Uh, mm. As far as any others? Uh, yeah, this Friday the uh, awards. It's the KZN awards on, on Friday evening at the Ilangani to get yeah. to uh, honour the champions from this part of the world. Well, that means we'll get in the we'll get we'll both be invited. We'll both be invited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both uh, get invited, not onto the stage. No, not onto the stage. <laughs> <laughs> we get a table. Get a table near the band, James. Yeah. Get a table. That's what it's like, you know. But uh, don't well, maybe it. maybe we are the band. Yeah, you know. <laughs> better than Bean Band Band of Brothers band, yeah. anyway don't miss it uh, if you'd like to go uh, you get all the Jill Simpkins and I'm sure she'll be able to find some space for you there mm. KZN Awards on Friday um, apart from that we're just going to have a look at uh, Jack Ramsey let's see what he's got to show us uh, from uh, 2013 
Ladies and gentlemen, recipient of the Anita Akel Special Award for this year. What is a 90-year-old? Is it an octogenarian? A non non we got an octogenarian, a non-engineer? Shall I just call his name? Jack Ramsey! 94 and still going strong and still working. Well into his 90s, ladies and gentlemen, and he's still seen to be working every single race meeting, and he still does a lot of cycling and a lot of walking, and not so much running these days, but we'll forgive him for that. He's absolutely passionate about the game, and he's just, I'll use a word that Paul Lafferty often uses, he's a font of memories, a font of information, and uh, he's blown away by this award, and, and so he should be, because uh, he's just a very special person. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful journey. Racing people are the greatest in the world. They're compassionate. They're always there for you when you're in trouble and always there to give you a good hand. And I've enjoyed every moment of my racing career. And I thank you. I don't know, there's not a bigger word than gratitude, but that's what I feel tonight. Thank you. Well, there we go. Well, we're lucky enough to have Jack on the show, and um, geez, Jack, you dressed up, <laughs> scrubbed up pretty well there, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a week shopping. A week shopping. To get was me it? ready, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, was that the first <clears throat> big award you've ever had? No, I had a small award when, when I tipped eight winners once at Newmarket, and when I was on the Ron Daily Mail. Well, they give you a voucher. They gave me a little cup and a check. No, but this is different. This is this an is achievement This award. is This yeah. is something great. I knew nothing about this. Yeah. This is a complete surprise, you know. Well, I'll tell you what. Many deserving recipients of this award. I don't, I don't think any more deserving than you. You know, we chat a lot and um, you're a font of information. And now we're going to chat about um, racing and, mm. and everything. But um, before that, I just want to put a picture up quickly of you um, when you were in the Navy. The Navy. Yeah. Well, we're going to just have a look at Jack when he was in the Navy. Have we not got a picture of him? You know? Okay, we well, don't have a picture of him when he was in the Navy. Of course you have a picture of him when he was in the Navy, but we've got to take a break. What is it? Can we get the picture up Jack when he was in the Navy? <laughs> okay, well, that's there it is, yeah. Jack, you know, I can't believe you haven't changed at all. <laughs> How did you get from the Navy into the horse racing business? Well, I wasn't ra racing before I went into the Navy. My father and mother both had horses, and I used to ride work uh, for Frankie Horneman, the Australian trainer here. Yeah. And... Uh, did we allow Australians in there? Yeah, he, he was an amazing guy. He, he was lucky to be here. Mm. He came out on that ship, the Waratah, and he got off here uh, to, to see Durban, and he liked Durban, so he stayed. Well, you know what happened. The Waratah went down with all hands between here and Cape Town. And uh, he trained for many years then, he up in Overport, actually. Yeah. He was up there. And was he a trainer in Australia before yes, he, when he yeah, came Yes, he was a trainer in Australia, yes. So then he decided he's not getting all the way back to Australia, no, he and he found, he found yeah. you. <laughs> well, I used to help him in the stable, and I used to ride work and that. And uh, my father had horses, and my mother. And um, that's how I got I actually worked at the Durban Turf Club for 30 shillings when I was a schoolboy. Yeah. Uh, I used to come and count the money from the gatekeepers. Uh, did, you, did you say two for you, one for me? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 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 Not no, that old sort of, you know, that uh, Indian <laughs> hat trick that you probably learned. No, you said you can't. The, the gate money, especially on gelada, it used to pile up, you know, it, yeah. it were two and six penny pieces in those days. Yeah. It was five shillings. And these things used to fall on the floor and they used to have to sort all this out. And I worked every week like that. And um, 
that's how I got into it. I used to punt as well with my, with, with my 30 shillings because <laughs> the jockeys were all friends of mine too at those days, you know. Well, you've seen some pretty good jockeys in your time. Yes, I have. Yeah. I've seen the greatest, Gordon Richards, Willie Shoemaker, uh, and the local boys, uh, Tiger Rutt, Cocky Feldman, Stanley Amos, Pierre Stratum, Mace Roberts, all great riders. Who was the greatest of all of those South African boys, if you have to put I, them I into say, a nutshell? I would say Tiger Rutt. Uh, Tiger Rutt, he, was a, he just had everything, you know. He was a great judge. And, and uh, he, Marrero, this uh, Brazilian sensation in uh, Singapore, is not the only guy ever to have ridden eight winners on a day. No, no. Targa rode eight winners at Newmarket one day. He had eight rides, eight winners. And um, his daughter was in the car park. <laughs> yes, his mother, uh, Bernard Fade Herb's mother was in the car park. She was a little girl then. And uh, every time Targa went past on the way to the course to the start, uh, she'd say, how are you going to go, Daddy? And he said, I'll win this. And it came to the last race, and uh, she said, are you going to win again? He said, yes, I'll win again. She said, oh, you just keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> because in those days, uh, kids weren't allowed on the race course. You no, had to be 18 to get on the race course. You could go in the car park. Yeah. Is what I saw when I was a little boy too, in Maritzburg, is to park the car, sit and watch the horses. Yeah. I spent many a day as well in the car park, the you know, sitting park, there. Yeah. And it just shows you how it's uh, born into you and, you, and, and maybe just is it becomes a fascination. It, it just became a fascination. My father was a printer. He had a big printing works in Durban and he wanted me to be a printer. Yeah. And I just wasn't cut out for that. And Not exciting uh, enough. No. He said to me, if you knew as much about printing as you know about racing, you'd be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> but I just couldn't be a printer. Did you want to be a millionaire? No, not really. No. Money, money doesn't seem that no, important to us guys doesn't. that you know punt horses and enjoy. That's right. Yeah. No, enjoy a horse is a great animal. They're magnificent, and uh, they, you know they, they're the stars of the shows, which a lot of people don't realise actually. You've seen some good, great ones in your time. Who would be the greatest? You know, that's a very hard question. I've seen, as you say. There have been some wonderful horses. I mean, Java, Elevation, Radlington, uh, Casbah and Joburg, uh, Pocket Power, Sea Cottage, Mowgli, Illustrador, Dynasty, Gugu. All great horses. And I've probably missed a what few too. What about horse chestnut? Yes, he was a great horse too. You know, Ippy Tombi was too. I mean, mm. there's so many. Uh, that I've seen. Overseas Secretariat? I saw Secretariat win by 31 links at Belmont. You, you were there? I was there, yes. How, the, how did you get there, Jack? I was on holiday. Huh? Was it sounded like a nice place to be on holiday, Belmont, <laughs> yeah. probably the most important race well, in the world. Well, Gavin Brown, you know, he, he knew Sam Catuana, who's a Red Indian, who ran Belmont. And he wrote to, uh, to uh, Sam and said, Jack's coming over, you know, look after him. And they did. They took me all around, showed me everything. Now, Sam was, became great friends. Mm. And, uh, and how was that day? Can you cast your mind back and tell us yeah, about that day? it was a great day of racing. Yes, I, I won the, the, the exacto in the first race. Uh, just numbers. I took five and nine. I remember they came up and, mm. and paid about $60 or something. <laughs> and Secretariat himself? Oh, he was a great horse. I had 31 lengths he won by. I mean, it was amazing. He, he was in the, at the finish, the others were in, just coming around the bend almost, it was, you know. Well, when you watch that movie, Secretariat, it's just, it, and oh, that's yes. the actual footage, footage, it's just incredible. Great, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, he was a great horse. But a beautiful horse to look at as well, did he you was, see him in the parade yeah. ring, big chestnut horse? Big Red, horse. they called yeah. him in America, big red. yeah, Big was... Red. He was a great horse. Yeah, Fant he was. Absolutely fantastic horse. Getting back to uh, South African mm. jockeys, and you say Tiger Wright was uh, one of the greatest. Mm. Pierre Stratum you mentioned there? Yeah, Pierre Stratum a great horseman, I think. I think yeah. he's a good rider. And Anton Marcus, uh, also, I think he's a, he's a fantastic. And, and Del Pesce, Anthony Del Pesce, two good riders of present day. Mm. I mean, they, those two are very good riders. And uh, talk, Mace Roberts, uh, I, Mace, no one has ever done what he did. No, well, Mace went overseas where he made his name. I, I think many of our riders, if they went over, they'd also do well, I'm mm. sure. I mean, they have gone over. I mean, ridden overseas. Anton Marcus on JPEG, those two races he won. And uh, Del Pesce. And 
I think they would all do well. The, our top riders. I don't think that, that the overseas jockeys are, are better. You went to Ascot and uh, Johnny Gorton you knew quite well. Yeah. I was great friends with John Gorton. Yes. He was a fantastic guy. He told you to back one, but he was wrong. Yeah, he was wrong. He put, he put, it was a strange story. I, I, was, I wasn't going to go racing. And Brigadier Gerald was running that day. And I wanted to see this horse. So I, I went to Ascot and paid two quid to go in the sort of cheap enclosure. Mm. And you could stand near the parade ring there. There's a walk away to the... And I was standing on the corner and the old guy who was on duty got talking to me and he said, where do you come from? I said, South Africa. He said, do you know John Gorton? I said, I know John very well. So he went and got John. John dragged me into the royal enclosure <laughs> <laughs> and into the jockey's room too. And I met, because well, I, I knew quite a lot of those riders from when they came over here to, you know, to run in national races. And... Um, John said to me, I'll win the first race on Lord Rosebery's horse. He said, you know, you can have a bet on this. And as they were all traipsing out to go to the, to the parade ring, Lester Piggott walked past me out the corner of his mouth. He said, I'll beat him. And he did. It was on a filly called Grossa, an American filly, never run before. Mm. And he fought out the finish with John. He beat him. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lester was uh, probably the greatest jockey I ever saw. How did you rate him? Yeah, he's a great. Uh, he's a, he had a great sense of humour too. Great sense of humour. Yeah, yeah, he's a fantastic guy, man. I remember he he won the first uh, million ra uh, dollar race when they introduced it in Chicago, mm. and the, the reporters all asked him after, "When did you know you'd won?" He said, "Yesterday." <laughs> and <laughs> price. Oh, yeah. he, he was fantastic. He really was. He's a great guy. But he was, a lot of people thought he was a miserable, but he wasn't because he, you know, he had a, he had a cliff palate and he, and he was deaf and uh, he sort of lived in a world of his own, really. But when he got to, you got to know him, he was, he was a good guy. I remember when he used to come out for the international meetings, he always used to find me because I knew him from John Gorton's yes, times in right. England when I worked there. And uh, we'd sit at the cocktail parties and whatever. And he was so funny. He's he got was. such a, a dry sense of humour. That's right, yeah. Yeah, he says, uh, often he said, uh, talk to my money here, yeah, this side. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a great story when the, when the guy asked him for a fiver this side. And he said, uh, come around this side. And he, the, the guy said, no, give me a tenner. And he said, no, I, I, I heard better this side. <laughs> I remember when he rode the Morsa, that, that epic ride in, in, in Maritzburg, yeah. when he was left 20 lengths and still won. And yeah. he called the start or something, 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 because he left him and he got fined. And his, his wife phoned me the next day and said, Les has asked me to phone you and tell you that he'll never ride in South Africa again. <laughs> Which he did, though, later, because I think the Marisburg Turf Club paid his fine eventually. Yeah. Because it was ridiculous. That was crazy, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. it was crazy altogether, yes. Yeah. But uh, as, as a rider... Um, I believed he was the best. How did you? How, well, how did he's you see? such a good pace, a judge of pace. He's amazing. I mean, he, the way he rode, he rode far too short, really, for his, for his size. He was tall for a jockey. But he had such wonderful balance with a horse, you know. And horses seemed to react to him. Well, when they got the Chalali across the arse, they re That's reacted right, yeah. because we, he gave them a smack. They knew they got a smack. It That's came right. from about uh, six foot above his head. Gordon Richards was like that too. Yeah. A great whip rider. Yeah. When he hit a horse, it shook, <laughs> took off, you know. Yeah. Well, the, the, I was just uh, re recounting that some, when I was a kid in England, I re re recall him winning on a, on a horse that they backed at Pontefract or one of these players. In fact, it was a northern track. Mm. And uh, they put him on the news that night because he hit the horse 22 times, times. in the last furlong and changed the whip. It was stride for stride. It was a, a, a mastery. Look, uh, the, the horse... I came off second best, but the horse won and they'd put their money down. A guy called Payne trained it. I think Mace will remember and uh, yeah, Johnny yeah, Gorton and them yeah. will remember. They were punting stable and picket yeah. home. They put it on BBC News at 8 o'clock right. and he got banned for a month <laughs> yeah. for abuse yeah. of the whip or whatever. But uh, he, he just, I know that a lot of jockeys who I know rode against him said that you never knew how well he was going. He was just, he always used to kid to you. And yes. sometimes he had yeah. nothing and sometimes he had. Well, that's a sign of a great jockey, I think, if they keep a little bit uh, in hand. I've noticed Anton Marcus a bit like that. 
yeah. he keeps just that little bit when you get alongside him. And Tiger was the same. He used to, Tiger was hardly ever used a whip. Yeah. He was, he was a hand, he had magnificent hands on a horse. Straight in the same. Straight in the same, they're not whip, whip riders, no. Yeah. <clears throat> With Charlie Berens, he was, a, he was a, a, a slap dash, but he was a good rider, but whip, 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 you know. Mm. You mentioned uh, Stanley Amos. That Amos family, they were yeah, steeped they, in racing. Stanley was a great judge too. I remember uh, I, went, I was taken to uh, Mullerton the first time Jerez won. And um, I was on holiday. And Pete Lowe said, I want you to come to the races. I want you to put some money on a horse. And I said, what? Uh, he said, no, this horse is going to win. And he said... You, I said, no, I'm not going to come. No, he sent a car for me. And I went out and I back the, put the money on the horse one. And I always remember Stanley, he leant over to uh, Cookie. His, Cookie and he said, you never had one as good as this. <laughs> and he was right. He went to, you know, to win race after race. He was an absolutely brilliant absolutely, horse. Absolutely, yeah, so. Jack, um, we're going to t talk now a bit about horses because the jockeys, mm. you know, you, you obviously see some fantastic guys. Mm. Shoemaker, yes, was... Shoemaker was a great rider, yeah, he was. And laugh at Pink Ale, I saw him. And, uh, and there was a lady rider, she married Fred Astaire after Julie, not Robin Julie Smith. Smith. Oh, Robin Smith. Robin yeah. Smith, and she was top rider at Belmont at one stage. And what about Julie Crone? Did you ever get to no, see her? I didn't see her. But I remember Lauf at Pinko said to me about Robin Smith, he said, that girl sure can ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did, he know, he, did he know her? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed going to America for your holidays? Yes, I did. I've been to America many times. I fought with the Americans in the war. I was attached to an American squadron, actually. Uh, that was in the Navy? In the Navy, yes. Yeah. So did you start in the South African, Air Force, South no, African Navy? No, I was in the RNVR and then I went to England and I went into the Navy and I was put through a, an officer's course and then eventually I got my own command. I finished up, I was captain of the Northern Duke in the end. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. No racing on that boat? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I used to nip off now and again to see the race when I could, but you know. Interesting, you haven't got any tattoos. I thought sailors yes, had I to have tattoos. I have got a tattoo. Yeah? Yeah, well, these on my arm. Oh, there you go. Well, that, that, that <laughs> a nice horse. Let's have a look at that one. You know, I'll tell you, some people should be proud of a tattoo like that instead of yeah. putting hearts with the thing. Yeah. Got a great horse through I've there. Who's horse. that horse? Horse. Which horse is that? I don't know. I just, <laughs> just said the guy was yeah. So you have, because I know Herman's yeah. got a few tattoos yes, as well. He's got the one, yeah. 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 Well, kids today, you see them, they've covered their whole arms. That's you know, right. That's, um, yeah. Their whole bodies with these things. No, that's a painful procedure. <laughs> I, I think more painful than today. Oh, yeah, well, it's terrible, but really painful in those days. Yeah, today, they've got sort of around to anaesthetise you a little bit, but this was, wasn't, it was raw, raw needle. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jack, you know, it's um, mm. magnificent chatting to you about these things, and there's a lot more to chat about. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this up, and we'll come back and we'll talk about all the horses and that next week, all the horses and the trainers, because okay. you've been around some fantastic trainers and, yes, uh, I have. and, yes. and horses too, and you know, we talked about secretariat, but the South African horses are what interests me, and your years <clears throat> as a scribe, you know, yes. what you've done. Yes. Actually, that's great. So let's um, wrap with Jack, and uh, next week we're going to be back with him and have a chat to him about the horses.